Thank you, President Norris. I'm going to serve as chair today in the absence of the venerable uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Uh, and uh, so it is uh, 736 by my watch, and we'll call the Public Works Committee for Wednesday, April 12th, uh, 2023 to order. Uh, our first order of business is a presentation on the stormwater uh, fee update, an overview of year one. And I assume Allison and Tony and crew are going to uh, take the helm from here. That's correct. Um, yeah, so we um, will be providing an overview of um, the fees that have been collected over the past year, um, as far as, and also credits and uh, so income expenses and projects that are in the pipeline. So you have an idea of what, where the money is going to. So I will hand it over. Isaac, are you going to do the presentation or Tony? Tony and I are gonna tag team. All yeah. right. Yeah, do you want me to share my screen, Allison? Um, if you are comfortable, yeah. I do have it ready. If not. Yeah, let me uh, see if- uh, Let me give you um, co-host. There you go. This works. Are you seeing the slides? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay, just a second. Oh, one more button. Yes, it's coming. There you go. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, so thank you. And we are going to um, uh, give you an overview uh, of just a little history here for in case there's those uh, that aren't familiar with the full background of the program. In 2020, around September, we kicked off the stormwater fee study. Uh, we engaged a stormwater advisory committee that had several meetings in late 2020 and early 2021 to help establish the targeted level of service for the stormwater program and the appropriate budget uh, to support that program, as well as the credit policy concepts. And credit, uh, the credit policy is something that allows property owners that manage stormwater on their property to receive a discount off of their stormwater fee for, for their uh, management of stormwater. <clears throat> so as we moved into 2021, we uh, held a series of public meetings between I think, January and October uh, range. And that process, you know, culminated in the enactment of an ordinance in December of 2021, establishing the stormwater fee. Uh, that fee was uh, determined to be a, a phased in fee. So in the first year, which was the 2022 uh, calendar year, the fee was set at $80 in ERU and then scheduled to increase to 160 in, in year two, which is 2023, and then ultimately to 220 dollars per, <clears throat> per ERU in year three. Um, where we are right now in this timeline is you know, the 2023 tax bills have been sent out. Um, and you know we do allow appeals uh, to come into those. Uh, they're supposed to be in within 30 days of billing, but th that can be extended. And uh, you know, if somebody just has an inquiry about their stormwater fee, you know, they can they can you know reach out anytime throughout the year and, and we would respond to that. Uh, we also encourage property owners to, um, you know, apply for credits uh, well in advance of the September 1st uh, deadline. Uh, we have a September deadline, so we have time to get through all the evaluations, any back and forth uh, that's necessary. So those, um, any credits that are approved would be reflected in the bills that would go out for 2024. <clears throat> um, you know, we also allow property owners to have uh, pre-application meetings um, with their thinking about submitting a credit application. And Isaac uh, Quilly, who works with me at our case, uh, will touch on that as, as he gives you an overview of kind of where the credits and, and appeals have come in uh, to date with regards to the program. So Isaac, you wanna take it from here? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, so Arcadis's main role over the last couple months has been to support the credit applications and the appeals process. Um, in particular, that's uh, what I uh, spend a lot of my time working on. Um, there are, um, we've identified 52-ish individual items, um, appeals, um, applications, 
uh, questions that have come through, um, but some of those items did uh, receive multiple uh, steps along the way. So we ended up uh, actually working through about 60 to 65 items. Um, like I said, that, in, that included uh, pre-application meetings, appeals, applications for credit, um, and some site visits along the way. Um, what you are seeing here in front of you is a breakdown of the credits, um, the applications for credits that we looked at. Um, there were 31 um, in total. We received entirely residential applications uh, with the exception of one which um, was uh, incomplete. It was the project was actually still under construction. Um, and so we invited them to apply again for credit um, once the project was completed in the first half of the year. Um, most of the uh, approved credits um, consisted of, do you wanna flip ahead to the next slide for me, Tony, please? Sure. Most of the credits applied for um, pretty much uh, across the board, um, there's a kind of bit of a smattering as, as folks were figuring out the program, identifying what type of facilities they might have. But when it comes down to what uh, credits were uh, approved, um, a big portion of these, uh, of these 29 were wooded lots. Um, the wooded lots are, the, the credits are very accessible to residents. Um, not everyone has, uh, not everyone is required to build um, rain, uh, bioretention basins or rain gardens, um, but a lot of folks can easily identify, yes, I have a lot of trees in my backyard. Um, and so they apply for those, those types of credits. Um, if you wanna back up a slide for me, Tony, thanks. Uh, we approved 19 wooded lots, seven structural BMPs, which include your rain gardens and your basins, and three buffer preservations. Um, the, uh, about a 75 foot strip of land um, between a developed part of a parcel and a, a water body. Um, and in that process, we, we hosted about 15 pre-application meetings with residents, uh, which ultimately reduced the number of resubmissions required. Uh, folks were able to uh, talk to us about their systems or about their parcels, identify what documentation they need to submit. Um, and as a result of all this effort, the amount of credits that we issued, um, which were only 6.4 ERUs, was uh, significantly lower than what we budgeted for um, in, the, in the budget. Um, so meaning we collected more revenue than anticipated um, in this respect. Okay, you, you can skip ahead two slides. Yeah, please. I'll just add in one thing. However, you know, we expect those credit applications to continue to come in, especially as the, um, you know, the, the, the dollars per ERU has, is scheduled to increase. People are gonna see their bills are getting bigger and they say, well, oh, it may be worth now submitting mm -hmm. a credit application. So I expect this year and even next year, we'll continue to see a slow growth in that. It may, it may never reach the, the number we budgeted. We don't know, we'll, time will tell, but um, I wouldn't say we're, you know, we're done seeing credit applications by any means at this point. Yeah, no, in, in fact, we're already on um, our, I wanna say sixth, application uh, this year so far. Right, so the, the numbers presented there are as of the end of 2022, correct? Correct, yep. Okay. Uh, one more, please. In terms of the appeals, um, so these are folks both uh, submitting both what, what you might call big appeals or small appeals. A big appeal might be, um, I don't, uh, my property should be exempt for the fee, here's why. A small appeal, I might say, is um, my parcel is placed in the wrong building category and I should have been charged half an ERU instead of one ERU. Um, there were 10 of those items. Um, the only residential appeal that was approved um, was a parcel in the wrong category. Um, and for commercial, um, they were all, the, the reason for the appeals were denied. The, the reason they submitted was not accurate, but as a 
process of the appeal, we're always looking at the ERUs we bill them to make sure that they're accurate. Um, so even if the, the reasoning is incorrect, um, we're still checking to make sure that we're billing correctly, um, which is why you see um, the ERU did drop a little bit, even though most of them were denied. Um, and we did also receive three to four letters of financial hardship along the way. Um, I mentioned them because they, they were presented in the appeal format, um, but there's, there was no, there's no grounds for appeal based on um, those provisions. Those, oh, excuse me, those circumstances. <laughs> Isaac, I'll go on to the uh, budget status. Yep, thanks. So um, in, in summary, you know, there, there was uh, over 1.3 million in billings from 2022, uh, a little under 1.2 million in revenue collected. Uh, the, the item here was just 2022 expenditures out of the fund was only 13,000. Now, obviously that, that looks like we're collecting a lot more revenue than we needed, but in reality, because the program was just sort of gearing up the processes in terms of debiting uh, existing stormwater costs out of that fund weren't really fully implemented. So there's a fund balance of 1.1 million at the end of the year. But when you see this list of bullets at the bottom, these are all costs that were incurred but weren't actually debited out of the fund in the calendar year 2022. Uh, township labor that's supporting stormwater management, the street sweepings, disposal and, and fuel costs, the leaf collection, there's some uh, uh, BMP design and construction costs, as well as just stormwater inlet and pipe repairs. All these things are ongoing activities. So my expectation is here in 2023, those processes will be in place that we'll start seeing more consistent draws of, of revenue, of those expenses out of the fund. And we won't see the fund just continue to, to, to grow at that rate as we, as we move forward through this year. Yeah, Tony, if I might jump in. Um... Sure. In our 2023 budget, all of those expenses um, will come out of the stormwater fund. So um, we'll see many more expenditures in 2023 for this, this fund. Yeah. Commissioner Lewis, why, why, don't we let, why don't we hold questions until they're, they're done and then we can, uh, then we can open it up. Okay. Yeah, I think there's just one more slide that uh, either Nathan or Allison was gonna cover here. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, it's a little small, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so there are a number of um, projects. Um, Nathan can jump in with specifics if you have questions on them, but there are approximately 12 projects that we have in progress um, that we're working on that will be um, debited over the next year or two from the key fund. Um, as you can see on the right-hand column, there are um, some projects or most projects where we have outside outside funding that will help offset some of the costs out of from our stormwater enterprise fund, which is really helpful. Um, these projects are extremely costly. So um, so this will help us um, reduce the need for um, bond issues, uh, at least in the short term uh, going forward. So but we do have a pretty ambitious project schedule. I believe there were a, a large number of projects. I want to say there were close to 50 projects that were listed in our in our pollution reduction plan and in our stormwater uh, feasibility study. And, and these are 12 of them that we're working on. Allison, if I might just highlight a few, Renninger Park, uh, Curtis Arboretum, uh, the meadow there, those are designed. Um, those will be going out to bid um, in the near future. Uh, we have secured funding from FEMA for the Pistol Range Access Road for that stream bank stabilization there on the Tuckany uh, to get access. So that is uh, that design process is initiated. Um, and then Gimbal Field is kind of in the, in the pipeline right behind that uh, for that gravel bar removal. Um, some utilities in the stream bank that we're trying to protect um, and, you know, just making sure that you know, doing doing the township's part for flooding in that region. So. Those are four that are moving ahead, uh, Gimbal, Pistol Range, Renegar, and Curtis. Um, and then we're hoping with some grant applications, we've received some grant funding for Robinson Park. We have uh, about $88,000 in hand um, with another, yeah, there's 400 and I think it's even, I think it's 475 in grant applications out for Robinson uh, in the future. So um, 
then then the other the others are right behind that in the pipeline but those are some of the ones that Allison thought we wanted to highlight tonight available to answer any questions about any specifics yeah and um, at the bottom of the list there are uh, several projects that are um, fairly large that have been on there for on the townships books for uh, 10 20 plus years and that's the U.S. Army Corps uh, Pekin Creek Flood Feasibility Project and our DEP Glenside Flood Project. Uh, they are moving forward at a snail pace, uh, but they are actually moving forward, um, probably uh, making some progress, um, more progress than they've made uh, in the past. So um, yep. DEP um, is in the process of working on legal descriptions and right-of-way plans uh, so the township can start acquiring the, the easements required um, to do the improvements. Um, and the township actually just recently received um, over a half a million dollars in grant money to help acquire some of the, the land required for that project. So we we are moving forward on, on that project. And the Army Corps project, um, the feasibility study was completed in 2022. Uh, the project has been authorized, um, which is also great news. So we're working on the legal paperwork to help move that project forward as well. Yeah. Uh, Tony or Allison or Isaac, any, anything additional? Uh, no, unless you have questions. So. And I do want to add um, a, a really big thank you to Tony and Isaac for all the work that they did evaluating all the appeals and credits. They did a Herculean effort at the end of the year to make sure that the credits and appeals were reviewed. Um, and in place in time for the 2023 tax bill. So we really appreciate that work. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a couple of comments and questions and then and then open it up. I know Commissioner Lewis has, has some questions too. Um, I'll, I'll sort of go in reverse order, starting with these projects. Um, uh, uh, Nathan, I appreciate you highlighting the projects that are you know moving along and, and that sort of thing that the, the uh, the one that's near and dear to my heart, the Glenside Flood uh, Control Project. I want to, you know, sort of give thanks to our uh, state representatives, Senator Haywood and Representative Nelson, who helped secure funding um, for uh, various purposes, including property acquisition. Uh, and uh, it's great, Allison, to hear that that is moving forward and hopefully in the next month or two, we can have DEP here to tell us about the progress that they're making. Um, if we could get that on an agenda, that that would be that would be great. But obviously, it's important to have you know start getting shovels in the ground on these projects, and and to the extent we can continue to move those forward, that would be great. Um, I, I do have two quick questions. One I think is probably easier in terms of the um, general. Uh, work that are probably mostly our public works folks do um, in leaf collection and storm sewer maintenance and, and that sort of thing. I understand that wasn't, um, those funds weren't uh, paid out of the stormwater enterprise uh, uh, fund this, this year or in 2022, I guess. And is that just because we hadn't built up the fund yet or is there another reason why that didn't happen so the plan was to um since the the fee was phased in over three years the plan was to phase out um funding from the general fund over that period of time as well um so the first year we were very light um in what we accounted for out of that fund um we have a lot of capital um, needs for for this fund, so that's one of the reasons why we were a bit conservative this first year, so we can see see what we would expect. Um, and as I said, uh, a lot of those funds will now come out of the stormwater enterprise fund uh, for twenty three. Great. Um, and then the the other question, and maybe this is for Isaac and Tony, um, in terms obviously, look, our residents. Um, so, you know, are in many respects supportive of the work that we've all done with this stormwater fee. Um, some who have filed appeals, you know, have legitimate 
concerns about whether they have been properly categorized or whether they've engaged either um, because they have wooded lots or actually took affirmative steps to implement best management practices. So um, when they file um, credit applications and or appeals or both, are we tracking the um, time it takes to uh, to process those, respond, and finally adjudicate those? Um, because if we are, I think that would be helpful to um, be able to provide to our residents that their concerns, their applications, their appeals are being addressed in a timely fashion and being taken, you know, not that you're not taking it seriously, but to really demonstrate with data that um, how seriously we take um, th their, their inquiries. Well, yeah, thank you for that question, Commissioner Armin. Um, so to, to answer your question, I think originally that wasn't something that was being tracked. Um, a lot of the reviews were kind of bundled together towards the end of the year. Um, but as we dug into them, I, I actually started thinking about that as a blessing in disguise. Um, while yes, it, it might have been better to get them handled quicker, I think by having a set of them to go through all at once, we were able to come up with a consistent set of criteria to judge them on. Um, rather than having one data point, uh, making a decision, having another data point, and then trying to reconcile the two. By having a wide angle lens, we can make it decisions, um, keep the decisions consistent between the residents um, and come up with uh, policies that would work long term. Um, I don't have the numbers at our fingertips, but I, can, but I do have the dates in a spreadsheet and could easily get back to you on what our, what our current um, response time has been. That, that, that would be fine, but I think more importantly for, um, you know, I, I assume periodically we're going to get reports like this over the course of, you know, in, in future years, mm -hmm. and maybe that's a, an additional slide that we can add to demonstrate okay. um, what, what, you know, what the process is and, and how it's being, uh, how it's being adjudicated. So, but thank, thank you for that. And I, I'm, it's not to suggest that it's not being taken seriously at all. Uh, but but I do think it's uh, it'd be helpful to folks to see um, how, how the you know how the process makes its way through. Yeah, understood. In the last month or so, I think we've been down to fifteen or so days. So it's a quick turnaround recently. Great. Th thank you very much. Um, other commissioners, I know Commissioner Lewis had uh, had a couple of questions. Yeah, real quick. Uh, thanks, Matt. Can we go to the previous slide? Uh, projects and funding, uh, the stormwater enterprise fund. So Matt, you asked part one of my question, um, why weren't those uh, other stormwater expenses included? Um, and part two of that question is, do we have any idea what the projected aggregate annual cost would be for those services? How did you say you, the budget had been established for uh, I apologize. Um, what was your question? Uh, the, the question is what we what do we anticipate the aggregate expenses of stormwater for this this calendar year, you know, coming out of the stormwater fund? For, uh, for these for for these stormwater expenses, yes. not not the projects for our you know, sort of annual the op operating operating expenses. expenses. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can pull that up out of our budget for you. Um, I don't have the number off the top of our head, but it's probably roughly about $2 million, I think. But I can double check that number for you. So if that's the case, if that was included in 2022, we would have had an ending balance of about 172000 Is that correct? Just uh, It's just an estimate, but... Is that safe to say? I think we'd have a deficit, right? Yeah, yeah. Deficit. Deficit. There was, I remember from the budget, uh, a larger capital contribution from the main fund. So that might have offset that budget. Uh, I just looked at it a minute ago. Commissioner Lewis, maybe we could get back to you on that. Um, uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. We can move forward. Okay. Do you have Mr. other questions, Commissioner? No, that was it. That was All it. All right. President Norris. 
Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my my qu two questions. Um, one, um, so uh, whether I guess it's for Tony Arcadis, can can you remind us the adjudication committee, the group that's reviewing the credits? Um, who is that? Who's represented on that committee? So are, are, is it is it your team? Well, well um, so when they come in, you know, Isaac takes the first run through the credit applications. And then we meet as a, as a group with uh, uh, Lauren, Allison, Isaac, myself, uh, Henry, and we get together. Right now it's once a month. It was, I think, every two weeks for a while there. Um, and we can adjust that depending on the, the workflow, how many things are coming in. And we'll go over the ones uh, that, that need discussion that aren't you know, super straightforward, you know, um, and, uh, and otherwise, um, we then provide a recommendation, send a draft letter over to the, the, the Allison and the, and the group there to review. And then if they agree with it, then you know, the letters will go out or if they have some comments or concerns, we address it. So that's, that's sort of the group that works together to resolve these things. Okay, is Gannett Fleming, are they involved? Um, on the typical residential ones, like the you know that are relatively straightforward, right. no. But if we have some more uh, complicated ones that are you know commercial sites with bigger basins and things like okay. that that need evaluation, then they would certainly be engaged uh, so, in that where appropriate. So I definitely do not want to bring up a discussion about Briar Woods, but my my question as far as the the committee, um, you you and Gannett Fleming were involved in that decision and you denied the appeal. Is that correct? The, the uh, appeal was denied, yes, with uh, consultation on with the group that we mentioned, plus Gannon Fleming, correct? Yes, plus Gannon Fleming. Okay. Um, okay, my next question or last question, if you can go back to, uh, I think it was your second slide, it mentioned revenue lost. Okay, that slide. Can you just briefly explain? I see that you, yeah, you lost six ERUs, the one thousand twenty nine dollars. Right. right. So, yeah. So that, so that, um, those funds are what would have been generated out of those ERUs that folks have received credit for. So they said they submitted an application. We reviewed it. It was approved based on the type of system they had. Um, multiplied by how much stormwater they managed, gave the percent off the bill, and we've totaled that percent in dollar amounts to get to the one thousand twenty nine dollars. So okay. it's six point four times one hundred and sixty dollars per ERU is is what equates to the one thousand twenty nine dollars. Okay, so then the uh, what I'm deducing from that is you approved twenty five. Uh, so on average, people got perhaps a twenty five percent credit. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. That's very helpful. Might, Any other questions from, I'm sorry, Allison, go I ahead. I was going to say, if I, I can jump in and answer uh, Commissioner Lewis's uh, question from earlier. So Great. in 2023, our projected expenditures are about a million dollars, uh, approximately $4 million in capital projects. And we're projecting two point. Four million dollars in income, so we would be running a deficit of two point seven million if we uh, manage all the capital projects that we are hoping to do. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. You're welcome. Any other questions from commissioners? No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, Tony, Isaac, Allison, thank you for your good work on this uh and thank you for the the report um keep up keep up the good work and uh uh let's let's get those shovels in the ground right there you go perfect right. yeah, it's it's been a pleasure looking forward to keep working together thanks isaac thanks all right M moving on uh to uh item number two expenditures over two thousand five hundred dollars uh, a, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Eagle Power and Equipment in the amount of $3,578.94 for repairs to the large public works loader truck C attached. I assume, Mr. Slade, you're going to tell us a little bit about that. 
Yes, those two cylinders are used to actually affix the bucket and the forks to the articulating arm on the front of that machine. And those cylinders basically become hung up after years. One was leaking, one was leaking, the other one was actually uh, stuck in the outward position, so they had to be replaced. Got it. Any questions? Uh, I'll move the uh, approval of that expenditure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Winter Equipment Company in the amount of $2,822.40 for large plow cutting edge kits for the refuse highway trucks. Mr. Slade. There are the, uh, the two trucks that we just recently received, which was trucks number 21 and 623. Uh, the plows that were purchased with that come with steel cutting edges. Uh, the winter blades have very hard rubber edges and they have what's called mold boards that hold them to the plow themselves. So right. they keep them shape, their shape. And uh, that's what that's for. It's a little bit easier on the highway itself. So that's why we change all of our larger plows to that type of system. Got it. Thank you. Any questions? All right. I'll move the approval of that expenditure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on to letter C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Quality Control Inspections, Inc. in the amount of $36,877.85 for inspection services rendered December 2022 through February 2023 for the sinkhole repairs on Chelton Hills Drive. Who's taken that? Uh, Mr. Coyle? Yes, uh, since the sinkhole repairs really ramped up in December, uh, at the request of the board and the former township manager, we have had QCI have a daily inspector there, keeping an eye on all the work <laughs> being done. They prepare daily reports to make sure that everything's being done the proper way. And these are what the monthly bills add up to. So you got three months worth of bills at 36000 and you know, almost $37,000. And... Uh... Uh, wh while you're at it, Mr. Coyle, why don't you give us a quick update before I go to Commissioner Rappaport's question about the status of the sinkhole at this point and when we could expect John Hills Drive to open up? Right now, they're in the restoration phase. Uh, they're hoping to pour the curbs, have them restore, restored by the end of the week. Next week will be a focus on the sidewalks and restorations of the lawn and remaining restorations at Rock Park. Rock Park had replacement trees and shrubs planted this week. And the following week, which would be the, I guess the last week of April will be the road restoration. We're looking at having that road open by May 1st at the very latest. Great news, thank you. Commissioner Rappaport, you had a question? I did, thank you. And I did wanna, later on, I was gonna point out that the trees were replaced and I just wanted to thank all responsible for getting those in as soon as possible. But my question uh, please is, where's the money coming from for the uh, for the inspector or inspection. Yes. Well, this was uh, part of the capital budget that repair. There was a little fluff money there just in case any change orders or anything came in, and this was included in that. Uh, Commissioner Rapport, we had a little trouble hearing you on that one. Can you repeat your question? I just, I, we're not getting reimbursed for that from any place. We're, we're funding that ourselves. No, we are funding that. So we're, we are um, technically funding the entire project. Um, right. We have applied for a grant from the state for about a million dollars. We haven't heard back from that yet. Um, we also were planning to use some of our uh, COVID money to help fund the remainder of this project since it falls within the categories where it's permitted. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Lewis. Uh, the uh, quarterly control inspections, uh, you said 37,000 for the first quarter. Is that correct? Yes, that was three months worth of work. That was December, January, and February. Can we expect that for the other three quarters or is this a one-time 
annual uh, cost? Well, we actually just received the bill for the March inspections that came to just about $14,000. So we can expect $14,000 for March, which was already received and will be on the next month for approval. And then April and hopefully in May, that is completely done with and we're done with it. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay. Uh, I'll move uh, approval of the expenditure for quality control inspections in the amount of $36,877.85. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Moving on uh, to letter D. I'm going to do both of these together, Mr. Stuckert. Um, consider recommending to the Board of Commissioners uh, approval of the following purchase orders for McMahon. Uh, the amount of $107,300 for engineering design inspections and documentation for the four intersection pedestrian and preemption upgrades under a recently award ARLE grant. And in the amount of $63,610 for the engineering design inspections and documentations for the uh, long awaited, that's not in the agenda, <laughs> uh, the long awaited pedestrian and preemption upgrades at Glenside Avenue and Rice's Mill Road under another recently awarded ARLE grant. Take it away, Mr. Stutter. Yeah, so these are uh, similar to previous um, POs that were have been issued for other projects for McMahon, uh, since they are our township traffic engineers. Um, they've assisted with the grant process um, in receiving the grants, and then they do all the follow-up, um, required follow-up paperwork that has to be submitted, as well as the design and engineering of the projects and the on-site inspections. So that's what those costs would be for. And are those, uh, Mr. Stuckert, are those costs covered by the, the grant? So they are partially covered by the grant. Uh, if, remember, it's an 80-20 match. Um, with the Arley grants, they did not give us their, their the full 80% um, when they issued the grants. So we were slightly less. Um, however, we did, uh, speaking with Allison, once they were awarded, um, we felt that it was important. These are projects that have been discussed uh, at great lengths over the past few years. So we did want to move forward even though there you know, would be a slightly increased cost to the township. And one last quick question. What, once, uh, assuming this is approved and, and moves forward, um, what's the next step? Once McMahon does its thing, then they come back to the board and we get to see what they put together or how does that work? So yeah, so this will, um, once it's all approved, we'll sign off on all of the paperwork for them to move forward. And then they start the design phase. Um, it's not as uh, complicated and involved as the full intersection upgrades um, because we're just doing pedestrian and preemption. So it should not take as long for the design portion. Um, and then they put it all together. It goes to PennDOT. There's back and forth between them and PennDOT um, for what PennDOT would like to see. And we talk about it and then come up with a, a reasonable final solution. Um, but yeah, once it once it gets towards that point, um, you know, it'll be sent out if there's any questions. Um, so far, all you know, like I said, we've worked very closely with them on getting penned out approvals and some, like I said, some give and take, some things that we definitely don't want to see that PennDOT would like, and other things that you know PennDOT wants that we agree with. Sure. So. Okay. Th thank you for that, Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you. Um so I had a couple of questions. Uh, so it looked to me like this also included the bid documents. Correct. So they okay. they will put together, um, and that's always been since they started. That was one of the big things in the um, choosing of the engineers is uh, the oh. entire bid process as well as the uh, grant process. So right. they okay. will prepare once everything is settled with PennDOT they put together the full bid document of what will be required and then they will manage it on pen bid for us. Okay, so I'm sorry, I, I have several other okay. questions. Um, are you okay with the various exemptions throughout the 
the uh, documents. Um, there were a number of them. Um, and I just, I don't really know the technicalities, but, but I figure you do. Are you okay with all of those? Yeah, it's it's kind of pretty standard. Uh, they don't necessarily all right. do all the uh, updates on the PennDOT platforms, which is fine because I manage those usually. Um, so, you know, things like that. Um, and yes, and, and so far on all the work that we've done with them, there's been nothing that we have needed that was exempted from those contracts. Okay, so things like, I, you're saying that these are pedestrian and override, and I have visions, negative visions of the possibility of, okay, you've got these uh, more or less fixed equipment there. Are we sure that this is going to really communicate that the new stuff is going to communicate properly and fit in with the old stuff? Um, yes. Yes. And you so, know the technical terms. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah. And, and in order to get to the point where we're at, um, you know, we have reviewed with McMahon. Um, I know the equipment that's out there. So we've reviewed all that. And in the bid, in, in the grant application process, we knew what was going to be needed. Um, so, you know, there may be something that comes up unforeseen underground, you know, but other than that, we know that the equipment we are using, um, and it was all part of the bids or the equipment specifications that the board approved last year, um, all that equipment. So we do know that that will work um, with whatever's out there now. Okay. And my, I hope it's my final question on this. So particularly the intersection at Rice's Mill and Lenside, there was talk at one time about changing, changing the intersection so that um, the right turn going toward the high school coming away from the train tracks on Rice's Mill. Okay. The right turn onto Glenside Avenue yes. going toward Easton Road. That I thought was up for discussion as to, you know, what was going to happen with that actual on the, with the design of the road. And then there's the issue of the speed uh, coming down, which is usually not according to the speed limit, coming down from um, church, say church or the direction of the high school mm -hmm. toward the train tracks from uh, from up above. Um, will the design basically take into account the like you know the the various concerns there because those are always ongoing. Yeah. Is so the there's not necessarily going to be um, major construction or road rate roadway realignment one of the discussions um when this was previously looked at right how the pedestrian um signal comes up um you know PennDOT actually when they re looked at this originally um at one point suggested no crossing there on that yeah. corner because they were concerned of the, the angle of the road there Right. So that will all be looked at. There's a way that it could be done. It does uh, inhibit traffic a little more at times. Um, so they're going to look at all of those options. Um, we've, we've been discussing that a bit. So um, everything will be looked at and it, it'll be put in place based on, you know, obviously their knowledge, from the engineering side, our knowledge of the intersection and what would be best for pedestrians. Okay. And it's safest. All right. Thank you. Sure. That that's the big big issue. And any other questions from the board? All right. W with that, I will move approval of the two expenditures: one hundred seven thousand three hundred for uh, McMahon for the uh, um, engineering design inspections and documentation for the four intersection pedestrian and preemption upgrades uh, um, under the uh, ARLE grant and the $63,610 for the um, 
uh, engineering design inspections documentation for the pedestrian preemption upgrades at Glenside Avenue and Rice's Mill Road, also under a ARLE grant. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to E, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Spring City in the amount of $10,171 to replace a decorative light in the 200 block of Southeastern Road that was damaged during an accident last year. I assume, Mr. Stucker, you're, you're on again. That's correct. So this was uh, actually, this PO was approved last year, um, but because the accident repairs typically come out of the operating budget, that PO does not carry over to the next year. So since it takes so long to get this equipment, uh, it did not uh, get received until this year. And therefore when the bill came in, it couldn't be paid. So it's really just asking for that money again. Uh, un understood. Um, and just out of curiosity, I'm sure we asked this last year when, <laughs> when it was approved. That did we were we able to recoup any of the monies from insurance, either our own or from the uh, the actor who damaged? So the property? we are working through that process with all of the accidents from last year. Okay. Um, some of them we have been paid for by our insurance company. Any of the ones that are paid for by our insurance company, if it's street lights, we have a $5,000 deductible. And if it's traffic signal related, there's a $2,500 deductible. So there were a couple that were sent to them um, for various reasons, even though there were other parties listed. So they are subrogating to try to get those deductibles back. And this is one of those. So we have been partially paid on this minus our deductible. I actually have another bill that will go in later this month to them to finalize that project and repair. And we'll, you know, wait to hear um, on all of our deductibles moving forward. And last, last quick question. Has this uh, um, uh, decorative light been replaced yet or, or yeah it, it was actually just put in about a week and a half maybe two weeks ago okay. um it was it, by the time that all the and not all the parts are in um but enough to get the light up and get it working again got it okay great any questions if not i will uh move for uh approval of the purchase for spring city in the amount of ten thousand one hundred seventy one dollars all those in favor Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next one. Consider you're you're off the hook, Mr. Stucker. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. Uh, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve an amendment to increase the change order number one for soil remediation in and around the bridge abutment at the Tukuni uh, of the Tukuni Creek Trail Phase Three to ensure a stable base for the bridge and trail by $28,910.01 for a total contract price of $1,160,428.46. Allison, do we know who's taking this one? I nominate Joe. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> he already disappeared. <laughs> uh, no, so um, yeah, so this, as we mentioned uh, a couple months ago, we had to undercut the soil around the bridge abutment to make sure that it got down to stable soil. Um, they gave us an estimated price of $119,500, uh, but said they couldn't really uh, give a final number until they got out there and, and started excavating. And of course, with all of our luck, it ended up being more than anticipated. So um, the increase uh, is up to one hundred and forty six thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and twenty six cents. So um, with uh, that deducting the old and the new price, it's twenty eight thousand nine ten uh, for an increase. Um, that being said, we have seven hundred thousand uh, dollars in grant money um, for this phase of the project, which leaves our total contribution at this point to four hundred and sixty thousand dollars for twenty eight. Um, we have another grant for $400,000 through the VRPC and a $250,000 grant um, from DCNR, which will help finish out the, the project. Um, so good news is this project is wrapping up this week. We had uh, a final walkthrough last, last week on Friday. Um, it is looking really good. Um, we talked about you know, additional landscaping. There will be a lot of trees planted. 
um, as part of the next phase. Um, so we're really excited about it, but uh, unfortunately we will be blocking off the entrances to keep people safe in crossing Tokeny Creek uh, or uh, New Second Street, I apologize. So, but it, it's really exciting to see this project moving forward. Any questions by uh, my fellow commissioners? Yeah. Commissioner Norris. Mr. Chairman, uh, Allison, I think an easy question. The the trail extension, I know it goes to Gimbal Field. Does it go past that? So right, right now it terminates um, right at the end of the parking lot for Gimbal Field. Um, but in the next phase, um, it will follow the parking lot and terminate at Harrison Ave Avenue. Um, and then right now it also terminates at New Second Street, but we will continue it into that little island across the street to, to make the connection with the existing trail. To its, so high, a, to its high school park? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it'll, it'll expand a little bit on each end um, once we complete this phase of the project. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I'll reluctantly move the approval of uh, this uh, change order for $28,910.01 uh, for soil remediation around the bridge abutment to the Tookany Creek Trail phase three. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the uh, monthly reports, I'm gonna sort of bundle them together uh items a b c d and e the 2023 high uh, march 2023 highway department report the february I, I i assume that's march but maybe it is february um refuse and recycling department report the march 2023 parks maintenance department report the 2023 march 2023 Street and Traffic Light Superintendent Report and the March 2023 Fleet Superintendent Report. Of those reports, do we have questions? Looks like Commissioner Rappaport does. Yeah, real quickly, just a big thank you. I saw a few things that are a little out of the ordinary, some extra uh, roadside litter pickup in places that are near and dear to my ward's heart. <laughs> so thank you, especially for that kind of thing. Um, the uh, sales of the old equipment, you know, that's, I know you do that routinely, but, uh, you know, I just want to call attention to that because that was very um, useful and, and, and observant of our finances. Um, and it comes up periodically, what do we do with the old stuff? Well, our guys here uh, sell it. So that, that's good to know. Um, sympathetically, uh, I, I know one of the one of the lines on the uh, report was that you keep reporting potholes to PennDOT. And I guess, you know, I know this is going to sound cynical and sarcastic, but and probably that's how I mean it. So who pays for our staff time when we end up having to continue to report over and over again the same potholes? and patch over and over again because they're not doing their job. Sorry, I'm just throwing that out for anybody who wants to <laughs> deal with it. I mean, Commissioner Rappaport, that's one of our responsibilities to the residents out there is to report those things as we see them and as they come in. We encourage the residents to report them as well because the more reports that go to PennDOT, the more likely there is for action, but it's just, yeah, but just part of the job. Well, that, that's being a good sport, but um, there's still some awfully egregious ones out there that I know you guys have patched and you know, they can't hold forever. It's, it's a bigger job than that. And I'm frustrated for you. Just recognize that we, we know you're out there doing your work and theirs as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Rappaport. Commissioner Brockton, did you have something to add? Yes. And those are just speed cushions, but they're reversed. <laughs> yeah. right. Upside Thank down you. speed cushions. That's speed right. cushions. Thanks that's for all. the reminder. Yeah, that's what they are. Um, I, I want to sort of um, piggyback on Ann and thank both for his staff for what they've done over at Tooking Creek Parkway. Um, I've gotten people who actually 
called me and said, oh my God, it looks really great over there. So I, I just want to give um, some kudos out to Bo. Um, because to, I was just over there earlier today and it does look really good. So thank you, Bo, and your staff. I'm going to send all the credit over to Bob Dominic and the wow. highway department's been helping him out a lot. So yeah, they've been doing a great job getting that in order and there's still more work to come. Yeah, I know I met with you guys over there. Yeah, he does have a list. He's got a yeah. long list. He does, he does have a list, but thank you. Big, big thanks all around. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll move approval of the reports under items A through E or 3A through E. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, there was no Shade Tree Advisory Commission meeting for March. So moving on then to the uh, G, the Environmental Advisory Council. And there is one item for our consideration uh, recommending the Board of Commissioners approve an updated Bird Town resolution. It is attached. Uh, Allison, are you taking this one? Sure. Um, this resolution um, recognizes that the program for Birdtown has changed. Um, this is a program that we have participated in the past. Um, I think it's just a, a name change, uh, organizational change. So it's, it's changing from Birdtown to Birdtown, Pennsylvania. Um, and it's still sponsored by the Pennsylvania Audubon Council. Um, so it's just recognizing that we would still like to participate. Um, Commissioner Rappaport, I know you um, had a hand in authoring the resolution. So if you've anything to, you'd like to add, um, I know this is a project that I think is something that you support pretty strongly. Yeah, I, I you know, we've, we've done this in the past. It, it's important. It, what people tend to not realize is that birding is a huge economic uh, activity nationwide, actually worldwide. And it really is in a township's benefit to be part of that uh, organization and it, it, part of that movement. So uh, that part of the wording was just to make sure that we understood that we are not under major financial commitments or anything like that. Uh, this is just a technical um, a technical change and we're continuing to do what we've always done. And how long have we been, Allison, uh, a, a, a bird town or how long have we been maintaining this uh, status? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure, I but I uh, I want to say probably close to about 10 plus years. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's been the better part of 10 years because I believe I put a lot of those signs up <laughs> 10 or more years ago. That's a good as long as they've offered it, mm. probably. That's great. All right. I, I'll, I would move approval of uh, the updated Birdtown resolution. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, similarly, approval of the Environmental uh, Advisory Council meeting minutes for March of 2023. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to old business. Is there any... Uh, old business for public works. Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. Uh, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners enter into a professional services agreement with Reese's Professional Cleaning Service in the amount of $550 per week for cleaning services at the Township Administration Building, the Tax Office, Police Administration Building, and the Public Works Facility. There is a uh, some attachment there, and Allison, I, I take it you're going to tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. So we um, are, are fairly short staffed in the uh, maintenance department. Um, we ha currently have two staff members employed, and they are um, working on getting our uh, pools and um, community centers up and running for the season, which is pretty labor intensive. Um, but they also have been um, doing custodial work in these buildings as well. So uh, due to um, furloughing some of our maintenance staff or our custodial staff, and also one of our, our third employee is out on um, an injury. So um, we are temporarily requesting to bring uh, Reese's professional cleaning service in to help offset some of that work so that we can keep our, our facilities clean um, and sanitary for our employees and visitors. Um, so this is 
this contract is set up so that it can be as permanent or temporary as we like. So there's, a, I believe it's a 60 day um, clause to, to terminate the 60 or 30 days. So I apologize. Um, and a copy of the contract is included. Our solicitor has reviewed it. Um, one thing you'll also note um, in the appendix, there is a copy of the BPT license um, included. So um, that's something that we have been including in all of our contracts when we, we bring people on. Um, they have submitted it. So um, with your approval, we can get them started. Okay. Any questions from uh, any commissioners? Commissioner Lewis. Uh, you're muted, Commissioner Lewis. My sincere apologies. Uh, was this bidded out? It was not a formal bid um, as it's, it's kind of been a bit of an emergency to get people up and running. Um, but our uh, uh, Alan Brown has met with, I believe it was six different companies to show them around and, um, and get prices from them. So this was the most competitive of the, the six that he showed around and that had responded. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Any other questions? I'll take a motion on this matter. I'll I'll move the recommendation to enter into this contract. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, I abstain from this one. So it's four ayes, one abstention. For the record. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, moving on to Citizens Forum. Do we have any uh, citizens? I see uh, Teresa Camarota with her hand up. Ms. Camarota, feel free. Sure. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, and Anne and Allison. Oh, the question tonight, I did just post it. It's in regards to the um, incline of potholes coming down Church Road on uh, from Rice smell. Uh, I was under, with the understanding that they were going to sur resurface that this summer. PennDOT. Has anyone heard that otherwise? Mr. Coyle, do you have any information on that? Well, that's going to be a major project coming up as far as the Greenwood and uh, Greenwood Ave Route 73 project. So the utility companies should be moving in there, I'd say probably sometime in May. They're gonna be going right through that road and replacing the water company is gonna be there first, replacing the water main. So at this point, I haven't heard anything as far as them resurfacing it. Uh, I know that they said something over the winter time that it was a very good possibility, but I think with that project moving forward, that's been put on hold. Uh, well, Bans, uh, we're talking about the intersection at this point and the utilities coming in. When will we be meeting with PennDOT and with our commissioners? Is there Allison, a date on that? It, yeah, that's uh, a great question. Um, yeah, you. that is on my uh, to-do list to follow up. I was actually thinking about that uh, yesterday and haven't had a chance to, to follow up on, on the, that with them. I know they had talked about an April meeting and we're on the 12th. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, it's overdue at this point. And, and Allison, when, when you do connect with PennDOT, um, what's the mechanism for communicating to the public a, about that meeting? I believe they, PennDOT said that they would reach out through their channels. I, I would imagine letters to the residents, so we will also, um, publicize through our media channels as well. And, uh, uh what, what will they include? Because neighbors have been kind of on the alert to look for the meeting and uh, to share with their nearby neighbors. What, what, where does Township do an outreach? Is it simply online? The Township will, will do uh, its outreach online, uh, but I would imagine PennDOT would be mailing directly to the homeowners. And Allison, what, when that, I'm sorry, Ms. Camarota, what, Allison, when um, that meeting is set, um, in addition to posting it um, uh, electronically for, from the township and PennDOT sending the letters, um, if commissioners are alerted, we can also use our networks to get information out there as well. Okay, because the um, traffic here uh, has been noted the past week 
it backs up as far as Hecock. There's a line for an hour at least between Greenwood Avenue and Hecock this past week. Uh, it's really getting backed up. And I know the neighbors are greatly concerned that uh, the word won't get out far enough and people are going to be quite surprised when the changes are coming in the next month or so. So if we could get on, you know, a little bit more outreach on that, it would be helpful. And please give us some notice as to when we'll be meeting with commissioners and PennDOT. Great. Th thank you, Ms. Camerata. Thanks for that. Edie Servi. Uh, yeah, I just want to piggyback on what Teresa has said. Uh, we're coming up very close to the time where that intersection is going to be closed. And it's going to impact more than the immediate area of Church Road and Greenwood Avenue. Uh, in addition to what PennDOT is going to be doing, uh, we need to meet with someone to talk about the detours and what changes need to be made so that there is not an untenable impact on the traffic in the neighborhoods with people trying to cut through. And if the construction, if the, the water main is going to be re, re, uh, replaced beginning in May, we need those meetings now. Yeah, yeah ag agreed. Th thank you for that comment. And um, Allison, I know that um, uh, I, I happen to see it uh, in in the local sort of news and and uh, uh, social media about a, an intersection that's being worked on in in Abington, and, and they have done some outreach. At, uh, this is at Old York and Susquehanna, and uh, they've done some outreach uh, to the local media outlets and and that sort of thing. And I think that probably once we have a plan in place. Um, that sort of thing would be helpful as well, because mm -hmm. I think uh, um, Edie's point is well taken. It obviously impacts the immediate neighbors uh, most directly, but lots of people go through that intersection who may not live there. So um, I think that's important. Absolutely. And we can look at um, potential for putting the signboards out um, ahead of schedule uh, to alert people to look for more information on our website or, or something. We'll work through a plan, definitely. Agreed. That's great. That, thank, thank you. That. Thank you, Teresa and, and Edie. Uh, I think I think someone's share. I think, Teresa, you're sharing your screen, so you may want to um, stop doing that so it's not <laughs> public to the entire township. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rappaport, you had a, a Yeah, question. just just for the record, I, you know, I have been very concerned about that intersection and just want to note that I did uh, send uh, individually uh, a letter to PennDOT voicing a number of my concerns, including uh, about the uh, detours and about some of the other, basically uh, uh, use of our uh, uh, public safety people uh, and, uh, and also copied the township on that and raise some other issues. So um, it is, it is a pretty upsetting and emotional change for two years for a lot of people, a lot of residents. There's still unresolved issues with uh, the downstream folks from uh, church and into the Robinson Air, uh, Park area, flood, flood area. And so um, these do, and I know the township did get back to me uh, with with some answers. I'm not I'm not fully um, satisfied, and so these are going to need to be addressed in a public way. Thank you for that, Commissioner Rappaport. Um, Brooke Welsh. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up on what Anne said. I have been. Um, I've been really concerned about the, the downstream issues um, that affect the Code Historic District down through Robinson Park down to the Drink and Town train station. And um, I know that I have been um, going around and around with Mitch to set up a time with him to kind of talk with him about it because I think my concern is that this project will impact stormwater issues further down the township into Alkins Park, down through Melrose Park, you know, along the way that the, that the creek flows. So um, 
at this point, because I've been trying to do this with Mitch for several weeks, I just want to open it up and just say that I'm going to contact each of the commissioners individually and see if you want to meet with me at some point to go through and have a look at what I was going to show Mitch as well. And I can do it with Mitch and other commissioners, or we can do it individually. I'm really happy to take the time to do it because it feels very important to me. That, that's great. Feel free to reach out. Um, I can't speak for Commissioner Ziegenfeld other than to say, as you know, he's not here, so he has some uh, personal issues. That yeah, he has uh, a lot. Of, I know he has a lot of family stuff going on. We've been in communication, but um, just because yeah. we're getting time is winding down. I've been trying to do this for several weeks with him, and it's been one thing or another. So I still plan on including him, but I also want to include the rest of the commissioners as well. That, that's fine. I think also it would be um, it would be uh, uh, a great idea to also raise it at the at the public meeting, which Allison's setting up as well. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks. Uh, Teresa, you had another comment? Yes, yeah, just a, a, another thought I had. The um, you know we have five major schools in the area that are going to be impacted with this traffic flow. Uh, three major township schools, Anchile and and Arcadia, and in fact, uh, a lot of students, parents, and faculty will need to be notified with regards to the changes. I'm not so yeah. sure that um, when the heavy equipment's coming in, but even if the the lighter stuff is going on, they should be notified before school is out. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great point. Typically mm -hmm. with uh, any of these road projects, I know when we dealt with the Church Road project uh, over by Arcadia, we made sure that the uh last at the end i guess it was the end of last year or september right um okay. we made sure that the school district was advised so allison we probably want to make sure we're looping them in and and uh, as well as angela thank yeah. you okay. teresa okay. A any other uh public comment for public works seeing none i'll call for the adjournment all those in favor aye i didn't hear aye. anyone else aye. Aye. thank aye. you <laughs>